Welcome. Today I'm going to take you through the experiment on equilibrium rigid bodies, which is more or less describing forces that are acting on a particular object that are in, is in balance. Uh, I'm now going to go briefly over the pre-lab questions to get an understanding and a feel for what forces are, how the forces are acting in equilibrium. So we're going to understand the concept of vectors. So drawing a vector has two components. One has direction and the other is a magnitude. Okay, if you're given two vectors, for example, A and B, and we're asked to sum the vectors together, what you do is add the vectors from head to tail. So if A is going in this direction, you go there, and B will actually be added right there like so. And the summation will be the resultant vector from head to tail there. So that'll be A plus B. Now moving our discussion from vectors and assuming these vectors are actually forces. So for example, we've got one force uh, going in this direction, another force going in this direction, and another force going in this direction. So the summation of forces is the same as the summation of vectors as previously discussed. If the forces acting on a particular object are in equilibrium, what you can do is actually sum all these vectors up and they should actually add up on themselves to come back where you originally started from. So for example, if we had this force and we add it with force 2, like so, and then force 3 come back here, so summing up all the vectors should come back to, to the origin or wherever the first force vector was. Hence, all the forces acting on that particular object will be in equilibrium or in balance and there's no motion in the force. So for a given force, in a certain direction, we can define we can resolve the force into two uh, into its x and y components. So we have the x component along here and the y component along there. So we've got f of x and f of y with a, a known angle here. The magnitude of the, in the x component is simply given as follows: is the force multiplied by cos theta. Similarly for the y component, it simply equals force equals the sine of the angle. So what we're going to do is actually find the direction and the strength of each of these forces acting on a piece of metal plate by the use of a force board. So the experimental setup is as follows. We have four pulleys, each with uh, its own carrier mass, um, with the, uh, the central metal object in the middle that, we, that all the forces are acting upon, and including another mass down the centre there. Here is one of the, uh, the carrier mass that is, all, that is acting as a force to this uh, central metal plate, and basically what you can do is interchange these masses so you can change the gravity acting upon the actual central object. And so you play around with it till you feel right that this uh, metal block is in balance, pretty much. So we've got gravity in the system and as well as friction that holds everything in place. When we interfere with the gravity of the system, we actually, if I pull down on this mass, you can see it actually affects the position of the central metal, uh, metal plate. That's because gravity in the on the carrier mass is equivalent to the tension in the string here. Um, so we can work out the actual force acting in this direction on this particular metal plate. So by changing the weight, we can change the position of the central metal plate. An important note, notice when I pull down here, I've changed the system and I let go, it finds an equilibrium position. This 
meaning there's no motion within the system itself. Hence, all the forces are balanced on the central metal plate. Okay, to measure the forces acting on this particular object, we now know that a vector has two components, a magnitude and direction. The magnitude for each uh, force acting on the, this particular object is given by the, the weight of each carrying mass. For example, here. So if we know the weight there, we know its magnitude of the force acting on the object. To measure the direction is a little bit more trickier. And so to explain this, um, we're going to use this little mirror. Okay, so here's our mirror. Here's the string that we're going to be measuring the direction of. And here's the paper that we're going to draw the direction from. So what you do is slip the mirror uh, in between the string and the paper. And then from your line of sight, you look directly down onto the string, onto the mirror, so you don't see a reflection of the string on the mirror. And once you see that, then you draw behind it, behind the string, and so essentially when you draw the line on either side of the mirror, you don't see the line at all. And so hence you've got the exact direction that you need for this particular force component acting on the metal plane. We're now going to illustrate uh, parallax by moving our line of sight so we see no reflection in the mirror of the string. Once you see no reflection on the mirror, we must clearly define its direction. So we make two clear distinct lines with your pen on either side as so. Now once you've repeated the process for all the five forces acting on the central med metal object, we now got to define clearly the direction. So all you have to do is simply get a ruler and draw from like so. So now we've got five vectors acting on this object with certain directions. Okay, now would be a good idea to actually label these forces. So I'm going to call each one just simply force one, force two, force three, force four, force five. Uh, notice the direction's all right, but the magnitudes are not accurate. But it doesn't matter for this example. Also, this vertical force is, corresponds to the vertical mass. And this would be a good way to actually, a uh, good point of axis to choose to measure all the corresponding angles so we get the direction down pat for all the vectors acting on this particular object. So, to the force one, uh, the force, the direction of the force one is acting in the vertical direction. And we can sort of that, say that's zero degrees. So measuring the angle of force 2 in comparison to the vertical axis, you just simply measure from the vertical axis the direction of force 2 and make that angle, and that's actually approximately 60 degrees. When a particular object is in equilibrium, there is no net force acting on that particular object. When you su sum all the forces or the vectors acting on that object, they'll all come back on itself to the origin. In the second part of this experiment, you're going to be looking at bodies which are in rotational equilibrium. Two bodies are in rotational equilibrium if the torques acting on them are equal but opposite. Torque is given by distance cross force. This symbol is a cross product or vector product. To work out the cross product or vector product, we take the magnitude of these two vectors and we take the sign of the angle between them. 
So torque is equal to the distance across the force. The distance is given the direction from the pivot point to where the force is acting. And the force in this case is just due to gravity, the weight force acting downwards. So for this example, to work out the torque, we take the magnitude of the distance, the distance and the magnitude of the force, so the weight force acting down. The angle between these two is 90 degrees, so times sine theta, which is just times one. The direction for the torque force is, in the, is perpendicular to the plane of these two vectors. Both these vectors are acting in the plane of the board, so the perpendicular to that is either going to be out of the board or into the board. To work out which, we can wrap our fingers around, of our right hand around from the first force, the distance, to the second force, and in that case our thumb will point in the direction of the torque, which is into the board. So in this case, torque is given by the distance times the force, and the direction is into the page. For the second part of the experiment, you'll be provided with a retort stand that you'll need to set up with this clamp and the piece of string will need to hang down and hold this long bar. You should set it up so that if you let go, the long bar hangs horizontally. You need to attach the two bull clips which you used in the first part of the experiment to hold the paper to the board so that they're balanced. What you'll then need to do is to use different combinations of masses and work out where on the bar you need to place the masses so that the two torques are equal and the bar is hanging horizontally. So for example, if I wanted to use 150 grams and 200 grams, I hang these masses from the bull clips. Initially, they're not in equilibrium, the bar moves. So then I adjust the position of the masses along the bar. Until it hangs horizontally when I let go. Once I've done that, I'll need to measure this distance here and this distance here. And I can then record those values and work out the torque.